Welcome to the Tunde Learning Your Podcast. Our program is entitled The Nigerian Theatre Witnesses to History. The Nigerian Theatre Witnesses to History. In the last 60, 70 years, the Nigerian Theatre has witnessed tremendous strikes in growth, in the volume of work, in the quality of work, and in the general commitment and production of professionals who are engaged in the work of the theater. These giants who have done a lot of work in the theater have brought so much to the improvement of the palates of those who consume the product of Nigerian theater. Our concern is that a lot of their works, of course we know some of them, but the processes and how they have worked, who they have worked with, have not been properly documented. And so it's feared that this may be lost in history and it will be difficult to then recall them even as time passes on these works. It is thus the belief of the Tundelani podcast and its collaborators who have thought that it's important to bring the direct experiences of these giants of theater practice in Nigeria over the last 50, 60, 70 years to be documented so that others can have access to their experiences and use their work in research and so build a better and more vibrant archive of the works of Nigerian theater practitioners. We will be bringing to you those who have worked in the Nigerian theater, how they have worked, those they have worked with, and the kind of experiences they have had, how it's helped to shape the kind of theater that we have in Nigeria today, including, of course, the Nollywood, which is blazing the truth. This program, the Nigerian theater, Witnesses to History is a salute to all those who have contributed in one way or the other to the growth of the Nigerian theater. So let's go today to the very first personality that we are bringing to you and is one that will excite you because it's contributed a lot to the growth of the Nigerian theater. Professor Femi Oshofiso. Sometime in 19... 72, I had joined a theater group in Lagos when I started working in Lagos. And the play we were working on was The Restless Run. And that was not the first time I was hearing the name Femi Oshofiso, but it was the first time that I was working on a play written by him. A highly, highly engaging play. At the end of the day, I played the politician and it was a great honor when finally in 1976, I met the said Femi Oshofiso. <laughs> and I wondered how a man would sit down and craft such beautiful dialogue, examine societal issues, in his drama. So that was my introduction to Femi Oshofiso. So from that time I kept an eye out for him and I was also hoping to be part of his place. Fortunately for me, I was able to do that while I was at the University of Ibadu especially. I went on to take part in the uh, in Murun Todu, a very engaging drama for me. I had very good experience. And I, I was before then in what's up on four of us. But today, our project 
is focusing on Professor Femio Shofiso. Because we have seen that the theater history in Nigeria appears to have stopped and not, no real progress has been made about collecting data, about collecting information. And that's why we have set out on this project. For those who are the real participants, the real people, to talk as witnesses to the theater history of Nigeria. If I spoke of 1972, that was not when he started writing drama or taking part in drama. Prof, what brought you into drama, into playwriting, into acting? <laughs> I don't even know where to start. <laughs> because, you know, at the beginning, you know, one was doing this for fun, just for entertainment. I mean, um, I must say, even in primary school, when I was in primary school, I did acting some. Mm, end of year productions, uh, productions you know. Uh, then I went to government college in Baden, and uh, well, you know, the, the school was mainly science bias, you know, but there was a lot of uh, activity in the drama session because of our principal, the principal, Derek Bullock, who came in just at the time that we, we, were, we came in too. Uh, he promoted a lot of uh, drama productions. Every year, in fact, everybody looked forward to his main production. Mm -hmm. The whole of Ibadan, I mean, who yes. comes, you know. And uh, also, this obviously uh, kept one's interest in drama very much. Um, and I acted with him too, so. But I guess the major thing was that, you know, I didn't do science in the end. I, I, when he, he called me and spoke to me and I decided to change to, to the arts. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, being the arts kept up the creative uh, mm -hmm. activities. You know. So I, then I went from there to the University of Ibadan. So it was almost like a continuation. Now, uh, the University of Ibadan also was developing at that time, you know, the School of Drama uh, with the uh, arts We were doing a lot of productions and um, this was this, this was really open to people from different um, disciplines, you know, not just drama in the department. Uh, we had a number of staff, we expected staff who took part in drama and all that. So, so you know, I also became interested in that. I mean, I wasn't studying drama; I was studying modern languages. But because of that, I, I was in theatre a lot. And um, I was president of uh, Drama Society. So we did a number of productions. We were interested in reading and reading. You know. uh, eventually, you come to write, mm -hmm. because it's hard to write. So, so I used to try my hands writing this and that. <laughs> but, you know, not as a major preoccupation at that time. I mean, I was just. Uh, this is uh, part of my extracurricular uh, activities then. Um, the play you're referring to, in fact, um, was written when I was in the second year, you know, uh, my undergraduate mm -hmm. course, you know, because I had been invited by some of my friends to have my holiday in Akure, you know, and mm -hmm. um, I went with them. My students, you know, uh, uh, and they were very much interested in local activities, in their local politics, the student body uh, association for that area. And uh, one of the activities they wanted was um, a play. Mm. <laughs> so, and he just asked me, go and do a play for us. I mean, I, I, I wasn't anticipating it at all. Hmm. Do a play for us, and I was thinking, oh my God, <laughs> yeah. how many, who are the actors, who are, <laughs> there are not many actors, the uh, you know, people who had ever stepped on stage, mm -hmm. uh, except one who had acted with us in the government college, <laughs> and the others, you are just there for fun, and so, and I was thinking, okay, what would be the subject that would interest them? So, uh, I mean, you know, each time we went out, I found that it was all politics. You are very much uh, mm. interested in political development and so on. So, and you know, doing what was going on in politics, I said, okay, I write this play, 
to my politics. And a few characters, because so many people were there to act anyway. And then just the stage, the bar. Yeah. <laughs> the bar of a club. There was no, no lighting, nothing. So, you know, because of that, I decided to make the dialogue very rich, you know, because that's probably. And it's very way. rich. <laughs> so, play, you know. But, um, not the first player, I read, I mean, my first US player. Yes. Back here. I became very popular. So, um, it was a hit <laughs> in many schools. <laughs> yeah. So then, you know, I finished my undergraduate, went to postgraduate uh, course, and then I, I went to France for, you know, my postgraduate studies at Sorbonne. And a very important period in French history, in France, mm -hmm. European history, it was the time of the student revolution. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I was very much part of that, you know, particularly the French people, there's a lot of agitation yes. in Latin Quarter, in you know, universities, uh, you know, uh, protests. And um, one thing that then came out was that the French intellectuals were also very much interested in political development. Mm. And also, you know, the, the, the cultural life of the people, you know, particularly theatre, yes. directed at Politics, politics of change. So that was where I became, if you like, indoctrinated. You know. mm. I mean, here we were just doing plays for fun. For fun. Like but there, plays now for social engagement, for political engagement, for change. And so many of the intellectuals that were respected were always there. I mean, sometimes marching along with us on the street, mm. right? particularly Jean Paul Sartre, who was right. old then, but you know. And then, at the warehouse, they had a big warehouse which they don't give to theater people, that they are productions. So you could go there, you see different kinds of productions going on, and all very. So that's where I became, uh, where I learned about theater as a tool for social change, for political change. And so I said, okay. When you look at it, really, you know, there's no real theater without politics. All the ones we are doing for fun, and all that, we thought we were doing for fun, but you see, they create some uh, at this political uh, yes. impression on you, yes. you know, fact, you know, and um, you look e at even restless part of the low cost <laughs> it was <laughs> seriously political. Yes, it was just fun. Uh, yes. Uh, Really keen on. Mm. <laughs> but when you look at all, the, even the novels we read, you know, uh, you know, so much politics, you know, you read, we thought we were, look at the, the spy novels, for example. Mm. We were reading about the uh, Ogo yes. yeah, yes. And you think it's just fun. Yeah. But it's not. Because it creates in you a political attitude to communism. That's it. So, Eastern Bloc yes. and the and um, also Eastern Bloc. The West will always win. Yes. So you know all that you get the attitude. Oh yes, the American hero will always win. And yes. Even we read Tarzan, you know, yes. and we thought we were enjoying ourselves. But you know, <laughs> the black person was always the villain, the, the, the victim. Yeah. The, the white hero, you know. And so it creates into you that feeling that the white man is always. The hero, and you know, we are with the black people. In fact, when you are watching, you be identified with the white person yes. against the black people, you know, <laughs> who are presented as primitives, as monkeys, and so you know. Um, so, she just showed me that literature is very important very. in creating social awareness, yes. you know, in motivating people, and so on. Well, I said, okay, so this is what we we, we will do then. So. And that's why I then became conscious that in our country, so many developmental problems and all this, theater could probably be used to conscientize people, to mobilize the society. Yes. As well. and so that's why I became engaged and um, became you know, really serious about uh, writing. You know, uh, writing was just for fun before, but now it had a conscious motive. So that, you know, this was uh, thanks. Came out of that, uh, what was the, your product? 
uh, having had this great awareness, ah, indeed, my work can be of great value. Mm -hmm. What did you then set out to do? Write a novel or write well, a drama? At that time, you know, I exercised myself in all kinds of... You did genre. poetry too. So I wasn't really choosing, you know. I mean, theater now, because I now did my thesis on theater, concentrated on theater, and it became the major uh, vehicle for okay. me to, to express myself. But also I wrote uh, novels, short stories, essays and so on, uh, articles in newspapers. Eh? So the whole thing now became a conscious motive to do certain things to achieve political uh, objectives. So it wasn't, of course, you know, I mean, the thing is that all literature, all creative has to entertain. You have to entertain first. I mean, this is all we are doing. But through entertainment, you catch the attention and then you can yes. pass your message. You know, through, if it's not interesting, nobody will watch, watch. it anyway. But, so, I mean, a lot of uh, questions were coming out at that time. So, if you want to motivate people, what language do you use? This was very important at the time. We were writing in English. You know, how many people understood English? Hmm. And imagine, you know, we are talking of the early 70s and so on. How many universities were there? Yeah. <laughs> how many secondary schools? So, it, it became important, okay, what language do we now write in? And we saw that we were just trapped in the English language. language. You see, know, talking of national something. Well, if you write in Yoruba now or Igbo, you know, then you become identified as a Yoruba writer. Right. Yoruba writer you know. And you know that, in fact, this was a way that many of the misleaders, you know, all the thieving, you know, going on, this is how they protected themselves. Yeah. So they wanted to accuse this of, you know, you have done this. Immediately goes by, it's because I'm from this tribe. This tribe. Yeah. <laughs> mm. After all, so, 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 in that tribe, did it. nobody talked, you know. <laughs> mm. And all, you know, so we said that we, we just have to stick to English as we as uh, predecessors did. But try to look for a form of English that will be uh, not complicated at all. Simple but not simplistic. Uh, and uh, the theatre became important in that way because in the theatre you can pass messages without just without the words in fact. Mm. Mm. You know, all the extra ways of communicating yeah. the theatre, movement, yes. you know, Mime, um, yeah, 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 dance, mime, dance, all of it. Yes. So, again, searching for an African form of theater hmm. that will be able to appeal to our people. And so, all those things were involved, you know, in the, in the kind of development I was searching for by the right time I came back here. How to find a popular theater to address political issues. Uh, and, um, you know, from uh, kind of radical perspective. You are talking now of late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, early 70s. You are trying to find the best way forward for a theatre to speak in the interest of the people and to the people. Yeah. Exactly. And you think you've succeeded? Well, how do you know? You know uh, everything is a, is a continuous experiment. Okay. okay. I mean, mm -hmm. we first play I did, of course, was uh, The Chatter and the Song, mm. you know, um, which in itself, you know, was highly technical. Mm. In the end, I uh, was trying to experiment with dance and so on, you know, um, and the play became very popular. I was surprised, you know, um, but I myself, I wasn't satisfied. I wasn't, I didn't think it was you know, popular enough, so, so I was searching. That's when I then did Once Upon Four Robert. <laughs> Using the traditional narrative uh, style, style with, yeah. the, <laughs> with the narrator and all yeah. that. So I kept searching, and then finally, I mean, I went also and did the fast. The uh, charting was 1976. Mm -hmm. I, I think once upon four of us was 78. I think that came out in 78, <laughs> and they were blockbusters blockbusters 
Uh, you just answered a question that I wanted to ask you in 1983. Uh, you know, you and Wale Omuyemi were the subjects of my master's thesis at the time, in 1983. And I was looking at the influence of the French on, the, on your use of the traditional materials. Because you, I, I saw that you employed a lot of that in trying to get the message across. Because even in the, you, you created the sounds, the music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they spoke peculiarly to the subjects that you are treating. Yeah. Uh, I was wondering what kind of influence you had in music before that, that gave you the pathway to creating the sounds that you used. Well, you see, one of the things I regret very much is that I, I never studied music. You know, in those days before us, music, music was very important in the curriculum of the schools. Mm. Um, but by the time we came up, they had cancelled this. So I never studied music. But, you know, when I began to write seriously now, searching for an African form, there was no way I would, I would not pick up that uh, idea of music as part of our cultural mm -hmm. heritage. And that music is very important to impress people. You know, you know. People begin to sing and, and they, you know, a form of traditional theater anyway, has always been that total. Everything, you know, the ritual, you know, uh, rather than from the theater we inherited from Europe at that time, which was just words, yes. dialogue, no music, nothing. You know. So this was now I began to search for music, how to do this, you know. And I must say maybe I was lucky that I met the right people, you know. Because, you know, I came back and uh, the theater in the university uh, that was available was, you know, uh, the old Ryoloku, mm. uh, not the old Ryoloku, I mean the uh, 1960 masks. Masks. Were, you know, showing cars in that. We have been trained more or less to music and everything. For example, Tunjo Irano can play all the all the instruments. Yeah. Jimmy, Jimmy Shula, like, and, yeah. and so, and you know, I did. I wrote this play. I just I didn't know music anyway. So I just, but I thought there should be music in it. So I, and I gave it to Dexter Linder. He was. You know, the lead, you know, the director of the troupe there, because, you know, I used to act a lot with him, so they said, you know, I want this play done, you know. And he looked at you know, the politics of the play at that time was such that, you know, he said he couldn't give it to any other person to do, and he couldn't do it himself. <laughs> Only if I did this, he mm. accepted He was ready to help, but, uh, ah. And I have never directed a big job in my mm. life. <laughs> you know how to go about it. You know. so, oh, beyond the Akure performance, mm -hmm. you didn't direct any other drama? No, no. That one, in fact, I didn't consider that as an important That's an important thing. <laughs> <That's an important laughs> <laughs> later on, I found that it was really important. Mm. But at the time, I, I didn't consider it. You know. So I was very much on to this experimental drama. So. Um, I decided I must reach. Now, all the actors were experienced actors, and they were watching me. They didn't understand my methods. So oh, they chickened out to say, mm. <laughs> so, but I was determined. I was thinking, in fact, when we did the final run through before the. Um, it was a disaster. Femi or Shofison's first drama for the Department of Theatre Arts at the University of Ecuador. A disaster or a success? <laughs> we shall learn what happened to his attempt to direct that play when we return for the next edition of the Nigerian Theatre Witnesses to History next Thursday on the Tundilaniyo podcast.